So let's start with a really good computer animation of the DNA molecule. Now let's compare it to the geometric model that I've made. Now what we have here is just three base pairs and they're made from different geometric shapes such as icosahedrons and dodecahedrons. So let's just spin it and compare it to our computer animation that we just watched and you'll see that there's a lot of similarities there. Now this is just made from manila folder cardboard that has been folded and painted. As you can imagine there's a, a lot of work that goes into this and as I make more base pairs I'll add them to the top and I'll add them to this video as I go along. Now, as we know, the DNA molecule is made up of the A's, the T's, the C's, and the G's. When it comes to DNA, the A, C, T, and G, the A is the adenine. And this is a picture of what adenine looks like. And you can see the black is the carbon atoms, the blue is the nitrogen atoms, and the white are the hydrogen atoms. C is cytosine and this is what cytosine looks like and the red is an oxygen atom. Here we have what the T looks like which is thymine. You can see it has two oxygen atoms in red. Finally we have the G in the ACTG and this is guanine. So that's what guanine looks like. When it comes to the A, C, T and G of DNA, they only combine in certain ways. As we can see in this picture, the A is combined with the T, so the adenine and the thymine combine together, and they're always like that. Here we have the G and the C, the guanine and the cytosine, and they join together to form this base pair. Now all these base pairs are made up of a combination of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen atoms. And as you can see, they are arranged hexagonally and pentagonally. Now in a previous video that I made, we looked at this geometric structure of the C60 molecule, that is the carbon molecule that is made up of 60 carbon atoms also known as a Buckminster Fullerene or Buckyball. If we take another brief look at this molecule, we can see that it is also made up of the same pattern of pentagons and hexagons. So it would be safe to assume that the distance between these carbon atoms is the same as the distance between the atoms in the base pairs of DNA. So using geometry, what we need to do is work out how to flatten these arrangements of hexagons and pentagons. And the result is this. You can see these icosahedrons are arranged in hexagons and pentagons, the same as in our Buckminster Fullerene. What you can also see is the little white hydrogen atoms as the smaller uh, white dodecahedrons. Now this is a geometric model of the AT base pair, the adenine here and the thymine here. Here is the other base pair, our model of the geometric version of our base pair and you can see this is the guanine molecule and the cytosine and they form a base pair. Let's look again at our computer generated model of DNA and most of us are familiar with the double helix spiral that's going on there in DNA and you can see it there particularly on the edges where the orange and red um, molecules are there, they're the phosphate molecules. That those there are actually uh, known 
as the deoxyribose backbone of DNA or the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA. Essentially the double helix backbone spiral of DNA is made up of the ribose, or should I say the deoxyribose sugar. You can see that it has a pentagonal shape. And here we have the phosphate molecule. So you can see there that the orange is the phosphorus atom and it has four of the red oxygen atoms. Here we have our deoxyribose backbone. You can see three of the deoxyribose sugars there and the phosphate molecule there. Now you can see the larger orange atom, that's the phosphorus atom, and it is the geometric shape known as the small dodeci cosi dodecahedron. So how do we come up with all these geometric shapes and what determines the sizes of these shapes in relation to one another? Well, let's start with our smallest atom here in white, the hydrogen atom. And as you can see, it's a small dodecahedron. So here we have a small black dodecahedron, which we will think of as our smallest atom, which only has one atomic shell. This shell is known as the K shell and both the hydrogen and helium operate inside this K shell. Now if we turn this dodecahedron into a stellated dodecahedron and if we then connect all the points of the stellated dodecahedron we come to this icosahedron on the right which we will think of as all of our atoms in the atomic shell known as the atomic shell L. This includes, among others, our atoms of carbon, nitrogen and oxygen as found in our geometric model of DNA. If we go inside this L shell, we find that it has two electron subshells. If we go back to our stellated dodecahedron on the inside, we can see them there, the subshell S and the subshell P. So now if we turn this icosahedron into a stellated icosahedron and then join up all the points of the stellated icosahedron, we again come to a dodecahedron, which we will think of as the atomic shell M. This atomic shell holds a number of different atoms, including the atom phosphorus, which was that large orange atom in our geometric DNA model. Now this atomic shell M has three subshells. If we go back to the stellated icosahedron inside, over to the left, we can see those three subshells, the S, the P and the D. Now the atom phosphorus exists in this middle P subshell, but we'll look at that in just a moment. From our atomic shell M, this process can continue up to our next atomic shell N, which has four atomic subshells, S, P, D and F. And you can see them there on our stellated dodecahedron. But now, as we can see, we can follow definite geometric rules to create the various atoms in our DNA molecule. Now, here we have a model that I built that condenses what we talked about. Here you can see the hydrogen atom as a small white dodecahedron. Coming up to our icosahedrons, which make up our carbon, oxygen and nitrogen atoms. And then we come to our phosphorus atom over here, the orange one, which is an interesting one. If we look at our stellated icosahedron over here at the back, the phosphorus atom only comes up to our P subshell, which is this one here in the middle. So we really have to cut off all the tips of our stellated icosahedron, which is exactly what we've done over here. 
but that leaves quite a lot of gaps. So what we have is a, a perfect little square as well as a pentagon. So if we fill all those in, we get this shape here, which is the shape that uh, had that big name, the dodeci cosi dodecahedron which is made up of pentagons, squares and equilateral triangles. So as you can see, the atoms that make up our geometric model of DNA are not random, but follow definite geometric rules. So let's just take another look at that as we spin it around. We can see the deoxyribose backbone there. Keep spinning it around. So let's take another look at those base pairs. There we have the uh, base pairs at the top. And there we have the base pairs at the bottom. So is this proof that atoms conform to these definite geometric shapes? Or shall we just simply say it's not worth worrying about? Just call it a coincidence because it's much easier than trying to revolutionise our understanding of atomic structure. So we'll let you decide.